I am here with Lisa Kernigsberg. Did I get it right this time? <laughs> Was it close? The president and founder of Initiatives in Art and Culture, which is holding its 19th annual fashion, jewelry, and design conference this November 10th and 11th. So I'd like you to first tell me about IAC. I think the core purpose of everything that IAC does is to look at visual culture. So whether it's couture, jewels, American art, picture frames, or stop signs, what is the visual culture that you're looking at telling you? I like that you use a stop sign as one of the examples. I like that IAC, you know, in the description um, on the website includes decorative arts because uh, for jewelry, a lot of times people don't consider it art. It's just kind of, a, you know, decoration. But I like that you have, the visuals are so important, it even extends to things like signage. So the theme of the upcoming conference is white. Yes. What is that about? It started when I was looking at paintings by John Singer Sargent and Cecilia Bowe, both of whom were late 19th, early 20th century American artists who used a lot of white. But their white was highly nuanced. So many whites are really comprised of those glints and gleams and nuances um, that are other tints woven in or other tints that are reflected. And I started to see a real dichotomy between an optic hard stop white that in effect cuts off conversation and the realm of I won't even say 50 shades of white, I'll say 150 shades of white. <laughs> I like, you know, you, I, I like that you pick these themes and it's really just a, it's a, a jumping off point for so many interesting conversations about all kinds of different art. We're going to be exploring things like white space, which is, in a sense, a realm of possibility that has not yet been explored, opportunity, white noise. So a sound that becomes such a constant that you no longer really hear it, and what do you do to penetrate that? And how many things begin their natural state in one shade of white or another? So then it began to seem to me that white could be a color of possibility, that it could be a color of beginnings, because in effect it's a color of origins, it's the color of the way things start. And often people will think of black and white as non-colors, and they will see red, blue, and yellow as colors, but white is has infinite possibilities because it also is prismatic and hence contains the entire rainbow. We knew iconic images like white shirts and the bride were important, but the question is, how could we take what was iconic and twist it and so bring what you might consider to be an edgy aspect to it? So to go over some bold face names, you, are, you have Jason Wu, Zach Posen, um, Beth Ann Hardison, Ebony Davis, Sean Lane, Daphne Guinness, Ralph Rucci, yes, me, <laughs> Valerie Steele, Danita Sewell, we have Jacques Panis, the president of Shinola. We're always interested in the trailblazer. People who dare, people who question, people who take things on, and also the fruits of their labor, the results of their thinking process. Those are um, of great interest to us because not only are they often beautiful, at the same time, they often change the way we see, change the way we behave, and the way we interact. We really try to go into every realm and find out, well, you know, who is royalty in that realm, and how can we induce them to come and share what they know and galvanize everyone to thought and action. You also have a very important panel on diversity. Yes, we do. And that is something that we feel very strongly about. And I'm grateful to a wonderful gentleman called Freddie Leba for introducing me to Beth Ann Hardison. Immediately she proposed, well, what if to have me in conversation um, with someone younger? So to talk about generational strides, generational challenges, and differences as well as issues like mentoring. And to me, that was absolutely a stunning idea. 
and happily Ebony Davis, who is an up-and-coming runway star, who very boldly um, wrote a letter to the fashion industry that was published in 2016 calling for increased diversity. Um, Ebony accepted to be in conversation with Beth Ann, so we're quite thrilled about that related uh, aspect. There will be a segment in which Rick Guidotti, who is a photographer, came concerned about how we have a very rigid notion of beauty. It's also a critical cultural issue because uh, often what happens is that what we see as beauty is also something that gets totemic value. We're very always want to embrace and actively seek anyone who is watching this such issues to be brought to our attention. We welcome the chance to address them. It's incredibly important to have as rounded a perspective as possible and also to try to do good when you can. So discourse, book signing, socializing, exchange, these are all key components to an IAC conference. I'm even more excited than I was before. I'm <laughs> sold. I'm sold. I already was sold. Now I'm, I'm sold again. Uh, so the conference is November 10th and 11th. So that's um, coming up very soon and in Manhattan. And remind me of the venue. The venue is the City University Graduate Center. We will be having an evening at Shinola's Tribeca flagship. And Jacques Panis, the president who is on the program, will be hosting that evening, and that is Friday night. And so everyone coming to the conference is joyfully welcomed to attend. And where do we get tickets? On IAC's website? You can go to IAC website and it will take you to registration. There is always a special rate for students. We welcome and encourage students to come. Excellent. And with especially good news, um, if you enter the code WENDYB on checkout, you're going to get a special VIP price that Lisa kindly arranged for me and you viewers. So thank you so much for coming, Lisa. And um, I'm going to see you really soon. <laughs> oh, yes, very soon. And golly, it's a pleasure.